Welcome back to the matches where we have Odin's Call versus Dweadbomb, according to their uh, corporation ticker, which is a much, much better name than Dreadbomb. We have Odin's Call here with a Lashak, Double Absolution, Oniros, Kitsune, Blackbird, two Sviples, a Vengeance, and that oh-so-classic one-point Skybreaker. BTT, tell me all about Dweadbomb. Dreadbomb have come with an undermanned comp at the moment. I believe that's mostly because they couldn't get the last pilot. They have brought double Leshak, double Oniros, Pontifex, double Deacon, double Punisher. Brought everything in sets of twos except for the single Pontifex. As you can see, currently uh, they are one point up is because the other team did not bring a full 100 points. They brought 99. And is there any reason why you would ever bring 99 points instead of 100? Well, because a Skybreaker, or as my friends have called them, a Chadbreaker, is much, much chunkier than any of the ships you can bring for two points. With with the resist bonuses it gets, which I believe is something like 6% flat bonuses, and it's four mints, you can print it, you can fit it extremely tanky, fit a tackle mod, and use it as that like heavy tackle which holds down a Leshak, or holds down something heavy. So interestingly enough, Dreadbomb has gone for the uh, incredibly big brain tactic of warping pretty much everything besides their deacons in at zero. So they're all sitting pretty much surrounding a micro jump drive beacon. And Odin's Call has kind of set themselves up in maybe, I wouldn't necessarily say a more intelligent setup, but they do have their squishier ships far, far away. Yeah, it looks like with the dual Leshaks, they've brought them all in close because they want to do a high amount of damage and they want the Deacons to be able to rep everything as we see links going up and teams are about to start. And they are immediately moving straight in with Dreadbomb. They are pretty much burning as fast as they can. They are actually using their tackle frigates to kind of swing up and around. I believe that they might be trying to grab some of that back line there. However, the Punishers that are trying to escape are already getting webbed down quite hard. And it looks like Dreadbomb is actually going after the Spipples, which is an interesting choice. They are pretty tanky ships, but I think that they're trying to prevent themselves from getting uh, tackled down too hard. And Radicos and the Spipple is actually going down really, really fast here. Yeah, the thing is, is uh, locking and firing on a Spipple, the, the time of armor reps is about six seconds before your reps actually land. So if you can break through someone's armor and destroy the ship in the six seconds before the Oniris has time to lock and shoot, you've essentially deleted the ship without the logistics being involved. It is especially important to do this when you have to wait for your cycle time to end, your red flash to go off, and then to recycle on a new mod. It takes a lot of time to swap reps on an Oniros, which is why you're seeing Dweadbomb swap between lots of different targets trying to push damage across the board to catch the Oniros out. And it looks like that uh, Liliana Vestigo in the Leshak was able to actually kind of push straight through the entire screening of Odin's Call. And so he's kind of in the back line right now. That can be a really dangerous place to be as a ship. As you can see, he is taking a ton of damage because he has kind of outranged his logistics. But he's also in a great position and has webbed down and engaged the Oniros of Odin's Call. So the Oniros of Odin's Call is exactly where it does not want to be right now. Unfortunately, both of the Deacons are Scram Web. The Scram doesn't really do much because most of these Deacons are 100 MN, but those, those those webs are going to do a lot of damage onto those Deacons. Just stop them abing about. As I say this, the Kitsune goes down. Yes, he was popped pretty quickly, and that's a very, very good call. That drastically reduces the amount of ECM that is on the grid. Uh, Loki, Ch Loki Chaco Chips is actually getting kind of wrecked right now. There's a little bit of damage splitting coming from Own's call. Uh, they do have their Oniros hard tackled, but it looks like they've successfully jammed out Liliana's Leshak, who is sitting in the back line now, pretty much tackled down and having trouble doing anything. That Skybreaker is doing a really, really good job screening. Yeah, and especially because both the Deacons have a Swipple sitting on top of them. They either have to choose to rep the Leshak or choose to rep the other Deacon. So it's in an awkward situation with the Wilpert in the Deacon. He has to, either has to save his ally or lose the Leshak, and it looks like he's just choosing to lose both. That is uh, probably not the choice you want to do. Uh, generally, if you're compromising, you want to at least get something out of it, but... Instead, he's just letting his uh, both the Leshek and the other Deacon go down. Uh, this Leshek is getting completely destroyed. He has gone down as well. The Odin's Call Leshek had the time and absolutely no screening on him, so he just completely wrecked him. It was a very interesting move. Uh, I think the Dreadbomb, they did a really good tr uh, job tackling the Oniris, but they just didn't really have a plan after that, and they didn't weren't able to screen anything off. 
Yeah, what you're seeing as well is I believe it's the Absolutions have fit some of their spare mids with tracking disruptors so that while they're tackling stuff down and shooting their uh, quite a lot of damage that the Absolution brings, they are TDing the Leshak so the Leshak cannot apply to these small ships like the Blackbird or the Swipple and stop it applying all its damage to the smaller stuff. It can especially, it can't be scripted because in these comps you're not allowed offensive scripts, but it can shorten the range of the Leshak and stop the Leshak spills. Now, that being said, Liliana's uh, Leshak was able to destroy that Blackbird quite quickly, and it barely received any reps at all, so I just don't think that Odin's Call was ready for the amount of damage that was going out. And Dreadbomb has lost their second Deacon now, so there's no logistics left on the Dreadbomb side, and they have been able to successfully clear all of the ECM that, you know, all of the bonus ECM from Odin's Call, but it's kind of one of those at what cost? You know, you're about to lose your second Leshak. Odin's Call still has a ton of damage and they still have their own Neros, which, though it has been tackled, it never really was in that much danger. Yeah, you're currently seeing at the moment the Dwedwam Leshak is shooting the Odin Leshak. They're just trying to trade damage and ramp up a lot. But the one thing you are seeing is just newts being swapped in between each other because a Leshak really, really struggles under new pressure it has a lot of cap needed for those guns and its armor rep so a leshak under new pressure is a leshak that can't rep and the last one or the liliana's leshak it's barely barely holding on but interestingly enough i think we we talked about it a little bit but the skybreaker weapon system is this kind of chain lightning effect and i've actually been it's been being used to a pretty interesting effect at clearing rep drones uh normally you'd use smart bombs to clear rep drones but i've been watching him just slowly whittle away rep, rep drones so you know if you were like oh the little chain lightning guns like oh that's not that great well in this specific format it actually did a really good job of taking out all of these armor maintenance spots which helped make sure that liliana did die before you could do any more damage. Yeah, especially since the the weapon of the Skybreaker bounces to multiple different sh ships and multiple different things close. It can just primary one thing and bounce to all the drones, so you don't really notice that your drones are taking smart bomb damage so you don't pull them. You just shoot them randomly and then slowly break them all down. And it does look like Dreadbomb is trying to kill the Skybreaker. It is a little bit too late, though. That ship is not a particularly... It's got really, really good shield resistances, but they're not a particularly strong armor ship. Um, at this point, you know, the two Eoses are still are using heavy drones. They're doing a pretty decent amount of damage. I just don't think that they have quite what they need to finish them off. Uh, HA... <laughs> I'm not even going to try with that one. Uh, H's Eos is going down pretty quickly here. Yeah, the EOSs are just not bringing enough damage here because the EOSs are probably double link and heavy newts in the highs, although I'm not seeing heavy any newts going out at the moment. So they might be blaster fit, but with their drone damage getting smart bombed off by the Leshak of Stoesh, the EOSs have no damage. That's why you're seeing their damage bar being so, so small and none of it is actually being applied because all of their damage has been smart bombed. And I think something that we sort of didn't really talk about is just how much damage these absolutions are probably putting out as well. Uh, we've seen them a couple times, but they are pulse absolutions and they do have conflag loaded, which is the super good short range ammo. And I believe, you know, depending on the fit, they can do somewhere between 700 to almost 1000 DPS. There's just so much damage on the Odin's call side and, you know, good tracking, good damage. They played really, really well. Um, I did like how Dreadbomb tried to get in there, and they, they did some good piloting to tackle that Oniros. So they just really couldn't follow up with it. Yeah, they had their high amount of damage with the Leshak, but unfortunately they lost their own Leshak too quick for the ramp to be applicable. They got one Leshak burning in, what left one behind, and just got dunked because of it. And with that, Odin's Call does take this 100 points to 11, even though uh, Dreadbomb actually started off with a one-point lead. And we are going to be sending this back to Elise Setonia and, I guess, Ithaca.